Hello and welcome to another trip report. I'm on the 10th leg now of my 25 sector round the world itinerary and I'm at Shanghai Airport here in Singapore. Today I'm going to be taking in yet another new airline for the channel. We're going to fly with Jetstar Asia to Hong Kong. Enjoy the video. Singapore's unusual in that the airport is not far at all from the city. It's just a 15 minute drive to the airport in a taxi. Jetstar Asia are, unsurprisingly, the Asian arm of Jetstar, the low-cost subsidiary of Australia's flag carrier Qantas, and used Terminal 1 at Singapore, which is the oldest terminal here. Checking in a bag is very easy and there are lots of kiosks. You need to serve yourself and tag your own bag, something which is increasingly common with low-cost airlines. I haven't lost my bag this way yet. Jetstar offer a number of bundles on top of their economy fare. Prices here are in Australian dollars. I was impressed to see business passengers have a special bundle which isn't just all services. It's well priced and only gives them what they need. I have a max bundle today which I purchased purely to test drive the product and see what value it brings. Singapore Airport is considered the world's best by many people and it's a fascinating place. Even this old terminal is beautifully designed and this art reminds me, when was the last time you saw the art installations in Heathrow Terminal 5 working? Airside is even more impressive, there's so much to do here and Singapore takes itself seriously as a transit hub, with lots of staff on hand to help. The airport's almost a destination in itself and comes with the bonus of having opportunities to see some very obscure and exotic airlines like this one, Myanmar International. Walking through the airport, I'm struck by the irony that the world's best airport also houses an outlet for Britain's worst shop. You may have picked up earlier that Max bundles come with lounge access, very unusual for economy tickets. The lounge partner here is actually a spa, although you can get a coffee here, which is what's keeping me going on this crazy world tour. You get a free 30 minute massage in one of those chairs and you can stay for as long as you want. So I guess it is sort of a lounge, but with the bonus of having a spa. I have to say I've never had a complimentary massage on an economy ticket before. So that was definitely a new experience for me, but I quite enjoyed it. Anyways, I'm off to do some uh, retail therapy now. Uh, I've just learned actually that Amazon have recalled all their power banks. That's the one that I use and I've had to throw it in the bin as I shouldn't really be taking it on aircraft. Um, they've been found to be overheating and potentially causing fires. So I've got to go and spend some more money and buy a new power bank, which is essential to me making these trip reports as I can't always rely on getting a charge anywhere. I'll probably end up spending a whole load of money on some other stuff that I don't need. But anyway, uh, Shanghai Airport is like a city within a city. There's no shortage of shops here. Pray for my wallet. I will return one day and spend a 24 hour layover in Singapore to make a special video of the dozens of facilities there are here. But I was most impressed with the outdoor tropical garden that also came with a view of my aircraft. I've never seen anything like this in an airport before. It's soon time to board and after admiring Jetstar's striking silver and orange livery, it's off to the gate. Be mindful that security screening happens at the gate here in Singapore. I'm struck by how civilised and organised Singapore is, both the city and the airport. It's a far cry from the chaos of Bangkok or Jakarta. Don't forget you can join thousands of others and follow me on Twitter and Instagram for all the latest updates on my channel and to see what I plan to get up to next. Jetstar has an all economy layout on its A320 aircraft and as a max bundle holder I can select the front row which I did. I'm in 1F today. Legroom is good, although you'll want to watch the gap by the false bulkhead here, and be sure to choose better socks than I did. Boarding is organised and hassle-free, and we're soon away, exactly on time.
takeoff from Singapore offers some great views over the city, and we turn north to head for Hong Kong. I always love the thrill of seeing other aircraft in the air, and it's a good day to catch several of them as they head into or out of Singapore. Here's today's route, which takes us 3 hours and 40 minutes to cover 1,585 miles at an altitude of 38,000 feet. Landing cards appear soon after takeoff, and it's also worth mentioning that for an extra 10 Australian dollars, you can get a comfort pack. I bought mine prior to travelling. This comes with a decent blanket, which I find important if you want a good sleep, and also a little sort of amenity kit. This kit has a sleep mask, compression socks, a travel dental set, and a blow up neck pillow. I think it's good value for what it is, and it'll be most used to you if you take a red eye flight, and Jetstar has plenty of those. The in flight magazine is entirely in English, and of course comes with a route map, which I use to inspire future trips. Talking of future trips, I do plan on taking Logan Air in the next 12 months if Carlisle Airport ever opens for passenger traffic. Max bundles come with a complimentary meal which is delivered soon after takeoff. Fortunately this was easier to open than the one Scoot gave me. I'm sure lots of you saw that review and I'm also sure you'll agree the difference in food quality is huge. This is a chicken casserole in a white wine sauce and it's pretty good for an economy class meal. You also get free water and coffee. The coffee is good, but be mindful that there's no milk, just a powdered whitener. It's not a big deal. It's worth saying that the meal doesn't come with a dessert, so bring your own sugar fix. Our journey across the South China Sea is quite turbulent, so I got a good hour of sleep. By the way, I never recline if there's someone sat behind me. What about you? Let me know in the comments below. As I wake up, we're only a few hundred miles from Hong Kong. The bathroom was tidy and clean even near the end of the flight, which is usually a good sign the crew have been attentive to cleaning it. And then my first glimpse of Hong Kong, somewhere I'd never been before. It's a spectacular sight in the dark. We're soon on the approach to runway 07 left, right on time. The local time is 9pm. Overall, I thought Jetstar provided good value on this ticket. I paid 200 Australian dollars one way, which is about 112 pounds. Bear in mind this is the most expensive and flexible ticket possible on this route, as I had gone for a max bundle. You can get tickets for about £70 with no problem if you book in advance. Singapore and Hong Kong are two very lucrative and well-heeled cities, and are 1500 miles apart, so I think this represents good value. I'd definitely fly Jetstar again, and think they get all the basics right. The crew were friendly, the product was easy to use and understand, and I came away with a very positive impression. I can see why people speak highly of Jetstar, now I've tried them. I was pretty tired when I got to Hong Kong, so there's no closing segment to this report, but the next report is one you'll really want to watch. It's Cathay Pacific First Class, and it was the best flight of my life. Be sure to subscribe to see it when it comes out. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.